This is the 12th meeting of criminal law. We continue our investigation of the homicide offenses with a look at the case of Girard versus State. Girard was convicted of second degree murder at a bench trial. A bench trial is simply a trial in which the defendant has waived the right to a jury and in consequence the trial judge serves as finder of fact as to guilt or innocence. Normally, the decision to waive a jury is tactical based on a judgment that a seasoned trial judge might be less swayed by emotion. Gerard had killed after being subjected to severe verbal abuse from the deceased, his wife. A traditional doctrine, misleadingly called voluntary manslaughter, allows the fact finder to convict a defendant of the lesser offense of manslaughter rather than murder, where the facts show that the victim had provoked the accused. In Girard, however, the defendant was unable to persuade the court to accept this plea in mitigation. The trial judge held that the facts did not bring the case within any of the traditional categories of provocation that are legally adequate to reduce murder to manslaughter. On appeal, counsel for Girard asked the court to reconsider whether the types of provocation sufficient to the crime of murder to manslaughter should be limited to the categories we have heretofore recognized. Let's step back for a moment to appreciate what's going on here. I have described the defense as a plea in mitigation. What is that? A plea in mitigation stands in contrast both to a mens rea defense and to an affirmative defense. A mens rea defense negates or raises doubt about the defendant's culpability. If successful, the defendant is acquitted. An affirmative defense, such as self-defense, points to circumstances that makes the defendant's conduct not unlawful. If successful, it results in an acquittal. It is, in other words, a complete defense. A plea in mitigation is not a complete defense. If successful, it merely reduces the conviction to a lesser grade. Note also that the prosecution does not normally charge the accused with voluntary manslaughter, but with murder. It is up to the defendant to ask the trial court to instruct the jury that it may convict the defendant of the lesser charge. The key to a voluntary manslaughter plea in mitigation is provocation. Proof of provocation involves presenting evidence that the victim's conduct had sufficiently aroused the accused to a heat of passion, <coughs> to a passion so hot that even an ordinarily reasonable actor would be apt to lose self-control and act out with impulsive violence. It's not that it is reasonable to use violence, but that even a reasonable person might be unable to heed reason. But traditionally, only certain categories of provocation were accepted as warranting a reduction of a proven murder to a conviction for voluntary manslaughter. These traditional categories of legally adequate provocation can be described as extreme assault or battery by the victim upon the accused, mutual combat, illegal arrest of the accused by the victim, injury or abuse of a close relative by the victim, and finally, discovery of spousal infidelity in case of the killing of an unfaithful spouse or the unfaithful spouse's sex partner. Now, it might puzzle us why Girard's case did not come within this last category. 
There was testimony that Mrs. Gerard had in fact taunted the defendant after telling him of her infidelities. But under traditional doctrine, that does not count. The discovery of spousal infidelity has to be both sudden and in flagrante delicto. That is to say, in the very act. In the very act of, you know. Gerard had been informed of the infidelity. He had not witnessed it. And the appellate court emphasizes that in general, words alone, unless accompanied by threatening conduct, are legally insufficient to prove provocation to excite the passion necessary to give rise to voluntary manslaughter.